Do you ever wonder what happens when the police leave? Crime Scene Cleaners are private companies that handle the cleanup after the police are gone. Spalding Decon is one of the nation's largest cleanup companies handling the aftermath of homicides, suicides, decompositions, hoarding, and much more. These are our stories. So we're in a nudist community in Florida. This gentleman was found after four to six weeks. He died Elvis Presley style on the toilet. Oh, right off the bat, you walk in. I've seen pictures. It's a really, really, really small space. You really don't smell anything right away? I don't smell anything at all. I can't walk into the bathroom because I don't have the proper gear on. Oh, you can smell it when you walk in. <laughs> it's not super, super strong. I don't see any other biohazard throughout. Um, it's actually not, it's not, it's not sure. bad. It's not bad in here. So, all right, we know where we're at. We're gonna go down and get our equipment. Gentleman was here for four to six weeks. He unfortunately passed Elvis style. There's a lot of skin slip, there's a lot of fat, it's actually a very dangerous job because we have to cut into the floor and it leaked into the third floor via fan. So we're gonna take safety as our number one precaution. Second is uh, getting everything up in a timely manner. This smells just like fried chicken. It smell like corn chips to me, <laughs> like feet. Corn chips and feet. Mm -hmm. What's it smell like one? Like fried chicken. Yeah, yeah, see? I don't get the fried chicken right now on this one. Let's do this! On the road again. Right now we're setting up our containment zone. Uh, you see where we put the blue tarp at. Um, this is our uh, clean zone. We put all our equipment. This is where we clean our equipment at. Um, this is where we grab all the solutions that we use and everything. Just a clean space. All right, so we're actually inside. I've got my boots on. I'm not Timexed up yet because I'm not going to just dive right in. I'm actually going to take some photos. It's like breathing through a straw. The high today, 91. Good thing is we got air conditioning. So right now, right at the bottom here, we actually have fecal matter. It didn't indicate at all. So that's a good thing. But when you walk in, you're gonna immediately see the separation of fat and body fluid. That makes this job that much more dangerous. If we're not watching where we step, we can fall by slipping on the fat deposits. If you look down here, this is all skin. Kind of puts you in the mindset of pressure stockings. The smell in here is actually really, really strong, whereas out when you first walk in, you really can't smell it. So if you look, it's all over the rug. All over the wall, there's skin where he slumped over on the toilet. All the way around. We're going to have to remove, at a minimum, 12 inches of drywall. It is very obvious that it had gotten into the tile and the grout and the subfloor. So all of this, the whole bathroom, has to go. All of the flooring is going to go. Hey guys. So before we head out for today's job, I wanted to give you a little backstory on what we do know about this suicide and decomposition. Um, we were called to this property last Thursday 
um, from the sister of the deceased to look at what would it take for a, a cleanup because um, they wanted to go in and see if they could locate um, documents, papers, jewelry of hers so they could head wherever they were going to go to settle her estate. Uh, they weren't here from Texas, um, but they wanted to take care of her affairs before they headed home after the funeral and uh, the location smelled horrible so they called professionals to come in and let them know how this works. Well, the property was not owned by the deceased, so they were not uh, technically responsible for the price of the cleanup, So, but we, we um, helped her out by grabbing some items for her that she could go ahead and take with her at that time and how she could then safely work in the home um, to locate the items that she was looking for. Um, to go and get themselves some respirators so they could work comfortably in the home and for their comfort she asked us to take the bed sheets to cover the area where the deceased had passed away so we did so that first part of the video you'll see where that's why there's sheets and blankets uh, on the floor so what we do know is the deceased uh, committed suicide with a gun. She was being evicted from this property. And the irony to that is the home is filled with name brand everything, the nicest furniture, the nicest clothes, um, purses, coach purses, Gucci purses, Jimmy Choo shoes, uh, just everything was primo. So, you know, I don't know what the relationship was between that and her being evicted. And if the eviction had anything to do with her suicide, surely there's way more going on there um, for someone to make that kind of decision. So here comes our job. <laughs> I'm cleaning the... The poop outside the bathroom because then we can walk on the floor because it's so dirty. Something just is struggling, just a deeper product, chemical. And so. All we're doing is sanitizing. So we have a small, clear walkway because it's such a tight area. So there's poop all the way down. It was poop sitting up on the counter. It was like a chunk of poop. And there's poop all the way down um, the, the cabinet and all over the floor right here. And um, right now I'm just uh, disinfecting and cleaning, trying to uh, clean it all up. And um, I was wiping the outside and I opened up the drawer and I see that um, there's poop right there on the side as well. Oh, I thought I was just going to have to wipe the outside of the cabinets, you know, an easy wipe down. And then Please. I open up the drawer and it's like, damn it. Oh, my God. Poop inside, too. So, I just rolled up the rug that was right here. You can see on my glove, it's fat. It's super, super greasy. This is super, super slippery. I'm going to spray one of my chemicals on it and that's going to help eat away the grease deposit. After somebody's been sitting there like that and everything has separated, it then becomes extremely slippery. You can see it's already eating it away. So I'm going to do a quick glove change and then I'll get this all wiped up. It's like a really big job because the blood is in all the floor so maybe it's behind the tile. On tile here is that separated? Let me move my arm. 
The tile is separated all the way down. This is all grease and fat. So this is what we're this is what we're wiping up right now. When it's small, you're so close with the, with your co-workers, so it's 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 hard. It's more hard. And you have to um, you have to do a good work team because everybody has to be in uh, contemporary in the same thing. Everybody has to move in a exactly time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. One. Grab the bag so you can hold it over there. This is literally dripping. Oh, huh? Melting bag. You want me to uh, take that so oh, it's melting so bad. Oh god. Oh. Oh, oh it's so fucking bad. I don't know. I, We're taking the toilet. It's so weird. It's so weird because it's, it's the body fluid, so it's not similar to any other um, thing. Ah, uh, I'm a bitch that stinks. Oh my goodness. It fucking stinks. <laughs> That's the only description I can give. So I think that is a mix of body fat, skin, blood, maggot, and fecal matter. Right? Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, this is exactly where he died. No, I need air. I need air. It's a tag team. Um, it's literally a tag team. There's not much space to work with, so I have one guy on one side handing me paper towels, I have another guy on the other side handing me, or holding the, a small bio bag just because we couldn't put the large bio bin, we couldn't fit it inside. So it's, it's a tag team, we're switching out, everybody's taking a break to get some fresh air. Uh, neighbors are really nice, so if we need anything, we can go to the neighbors, they've already come to us and, and explained that. So we're just trying to do our thing. The most difficult spot, or the most difficult part is that it's such a small space and we have to tag team. It's not like all three of us could be in there at the same time. Nice, strong, straight knife. Mm -hmm. Well, they all have their new blades now. Yes, this one will be ruined. <laughs> I'm sure. But well, now we gotta keep them separate anyway to decontaminate. All right. We'll keep them separate for decontamination. Roll that as tight as it goes. It might fit in like that. Uh, if we don't have to cut it in half, then that's not. So tight roll on that. There you go. And then we'll uh, bend it over. See if it fits in a in a bag. Yeah, well, it used to go in a trash bag, then a biohazard bag, so it won't drain in the box. Well, we have a trash bag ready? Okay. Padding as well. It barely fits in there, so it does need to be bent over, right? Yes. To fit in a bio. Well, we, I mean, we gave them that mattress. You on your last one? No, me too. So the door is coming off because the bottom, bottom of it is contaminated. So we're taking it off and we're going to have to cut the bottom off to go in a biohazard container. And then Unfortunately, when she committed suicide, no one found her for six weeks.
And so there was uh, quite a bit of damage to where she had been laying. So we're going to be demolitioning two different types of flooring um, and then remediating the home for, for odor. So essentially what we've done today is cut out so walls. essentially what we've done today is cut out kick plates, walls, uh, we've extracted the flooring. How is it? Extracted the flooring. I'm tired. It's like 92 degrees. My fucking back hurts. I'm hot. I'm glistening. I'm glowing. <laughs> I got boob sweat. Yeah, I'm living the dream. Living the American dream. <laughs> so, the unit below had biohazard leaking in from the toilet, the plastic o ring from the drain. Has a small hole in it. And the biohazard, the fluids down through her vent fan um, and it was dripping on her toilet so that'll be Saturday's job so all I'm doing I just flipped it over I'm going to set it in the bedroom when it's all done just because that's the closest point to the bathroom my mind hurts not easy doing something like this. But somebody's gonna do it. Martini, a martini a day keeps the therapist away. So I do have an update about this story that I think y'all will find interesting. Um, I took notice of an argument that started on Instagram when some of our pictures got put up there, that uh, this woman must have committed suicide because she wasn't given the chance to get on her feet, uh, and the mean old landlord, you know, made this happen. So when working with the owner of the property to get it back to its original condition, I did find out that the woman had lived there for 13 years, so she had longevity with that owner, and for whatever reason, she couldn't pay her rent, or stop paying her rent um, a year ago. He's been letting her slide for a year before having to uh, move to eviction process. So I guess what I'm saying is not all landlords are bad guys. So I just thought it was interesting information. So we are here on the third floor underneath the unit where we had the major biohazard. The nice woman down here was complaining of an odor and some dripping. And we walked in and found that it was coming through the vent directly below the unit that we had just cleaned. So we are getting ready to take the fan out you can see I have it unplugged. And the switch is off. But we were, we are going to see if we can, we are not gonna be able to salvage the drywall. We're going to have to cut the drywall. But we're gonna see if we can salvage the fan. All right, so we just cut the ceiling around the fan. And we found 
that there is not a lot, but that there is biohazardous fluid underneath. And if we trace it down, I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but that is the drain to upstairs. And that is how it was leaking in. You can see on the side here, it was dripping down and it was dripping onto the toilet. I'll give you guys another really good look at that. You can see that's all biohazardous fluid. Excuse my hands. You can see it's actually into the firewall. So we're going to remove this fan here and we're going to clean it underneath and we are going to seal it from below. As above is below. So here I am. Juan and I have opened up the ceiling from the third floor. You can see it actually pooled right there. And it went all the way around the drip point. Stops right here on both sides. So we're going to scrub it three different times and wipe everything down, sanitize it, and then we're gonna seal it in. All right guys, we are all done on the third floor. Everything is clean. All the way around, everything is sanitized. We could not save the vent cover, but we were able to save the fan and put it back for her. We just put a plastic barrier up, so that way the attic wasn't open. Excuse me, not the attic, the uh, in-between space. All right, we are all done.